Not what my hands have done can save my guilty soul. Not what my toiling flesh has borne can make my spirit whole. Not what I feel or do can give me peace with God. The Arminian view of the atonement has some problems. One of which, it's the idea that Christ died for everybody, every single person who ever lived. But it has some problems, and it's revealed in a number of passages. But I want to focus on Deuteronomy 21, 1 through 9. In that text, a person is murdered. Now, they don't know who. So it's measured out the surrounding cities. And whoever he's closest to is assumed where he's from. An innocent guilt... The blood of the innocent is upon that particular city, but as it says in verse 8, I believe, the nation as well. Now, a heifer is brought, and the neck broken, that animal dying, to pay the legal demands that the law made. But as it shows in verse 9, due to the animal dying and the offering made, atonement's made, and the blood of the innocent, the guilt, is purged from the nation. We see this, in, in other words, the doctrine of substitution. Atonement's actually made because the sacrifice paid the demands of the law. We see this in Isaiah 53 as well. The moral purity of the servant, the righteous servant in verse 9. No deceit in his mouth. The righteous one dying for the unrighteous. Ten plus times substitution is referred to. Just to quote a few, he bore our griefs and carried our sorrows, verse 4. He was wounded for our transgressions, verse 5. He was crushed for our lawlessness, also verse 5. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, Yahweh laid on him our iniquity. He was stricken for the transgression of God's people. His soul made an offering for guilt. He shall bear their iniquities. He was numbered with transgressors. But as it says in verse 9, he was innocent. He makes intercession for the transgressors. Verse 12. Roughly 10 to 11 times substitution is referred to. But then finally in verse 11, the righteous servant making the unrighteous Righteous. Substitution. Numbers 22, 20, Numbers 15, 20 through, through 26. Unintentionally breaking God's commandments, offering was to be made. And after the offerings made, the person who broke the commandment brings their burnt offering, places his hand upon the animal, Transference is made. The animal dies in his place because the penalty of sin is death. The animal pays for the legal demands, meets the legal demands of the law. He is forgiven. He is now innocent in the eyes of the law. That is substitution. So what's the problem with the Arminian view? Well, the Arminian view states that Christ died for everybody, but if Christ died for everybody based on the biblical view of of substitution, everybody would be, be everybody would be innocent in the eyes of the law, as this talks about in Rome in Colossians chapter three. The legal demands of the law nailed to the cross, as the sinner, as the worshiper, brings the sacrifice for a particular sin. The one for whom sacrifice is made is now innocent in the eyes of the law. The legal demands have been met. So what does that mean? So when Christ dies for a murderer, the murderer is now innocent. Christ died for a liar or an adulterer or a greedy person. They're sexually promiscuous. Whatever sin based on the biblical view of the atonement that we see in Deuteronomy 21, that we see in Isaiah 53, that we see in Numbers 15 or Leviticus 16. 
that person is now innocent in the eyes of the law. Christ met the demands of the law. What, how does the Arminian explain this? Because based on the view, that particular view, Christ died for everybody. But as we've seen in some of these texts, that means everybody is saved. But that's not what the Arminian believes. The Arminian is not an absolute universalist. He still believes people goes to hell. But that's thus the inconsistency. The Arminian cannot hold to substitutionary atonement and be consistent with his or, with his or her theology. He can't do it. Substitutionary atonement and the biblical view we see in, play, in Deuteronomy 21 or Numbers 15, 22 through 26 or in Leviticus 16 is that the one for whom atonement is made is cleared of all charges. The legal demands have been met. Mr. Arminian, what do you do with the types in the Old Testament? Because the idea that Christ died for every single person who ever lived, that he died for everybody, that kind of atonement isn't in the Old Testament sacrifices. It's not there. What do you do now? How do you deal with that? How do you explain the types when it comes to the Arminian view of the atonement? How do you reconcile the differences? The types explain limited atonement. They don't explain the Arminian's universal atonement. That doesn't save anybody. Everybody died. As a matter of, everybody, Christ died for everybody. As a matter of fact, for 99% of those people, they end up in hell. The atonement doesn't do anything for them, but that's not the view we see in the sacrifices. In the sacrifices, those who Christ, those who the animal is slain for, are cleared of all charges each and every time. There's no failure, so to speak. So how do you reconcile the sacrifices, Mr. Arminian? Hmm? Take care. Hopefully this was clear. Um difficult subject. I was trying to press a good bit of information in a, just a few minutes. And hopefully I did well. Hopefully it was at least understandable to your Arminians that you understood what I was trying to come across. And how do you answer? Take care. Bye.